Well, good morning, friends. If this is your first time growing fall vegetables, may I recommend cabbage. It's an all-time favorite in the fall garden. Uh, we'll get started on this and we'll grow it together. Be right back. Well, welcome back. Today we want to take you through the process of growing cabbage from the seed all the way to the table. Now, if this is your first time growing cabbage, don't let it scare you. It's pretty easy to grow. This is just a couple of tricks along the way and we're going to show you how to do them. But the first thing we want to do is get some seeds in the starter cups and get them in the seed starting rack so we can get started on uh, getting these things going. These uh, seeds I bought at johnnyseed.com online, so if you want to get some of these for yourself, that's a good place to go get them. You can get them on several different websites, but this just happens to be where I got these. I'm using the Caraflex um, variety. makes it easy for me to grow. So let's get these uh, Caraflex cabbage seeds planted, and we'll get them in the rack. Okay, here's how I start all of my seeds from I use a 1020 starting tray and I like to use the ones with the drain holes because I start my seeds outdoors so I don't uh, have a problem with the drainage of the uh, water seeping through and getting anything wet on the inside of my house or the inside of an indoor container seed starting container because I, I do all my seed starting outside so I like to have the, the drain holes in mind because I want to keep my cuts I want the water to fall completely through my cups and um, and let me add water as needed instead of them standing in water for too long of a period of time, which rots my seeds. Okay, so that's, how, that's why I use the 1020 drain um, tray. Now I use my cups, my seed starting cups. I like to use the ones that have a, a you know at least a two to three inch deep uh, cell because I want to get a good root system through here before I try to push pull that uh, little seedling out of there. Next thing I do is I add my seed starting mix and I make my own seed starting mix so if you want to learn how to make this stuff at home you can. Uh, we have a video on our channel that explains how to do that and demonstrates it pretty clear. Or you can, if you only have one or two trays to do then just simply go buy some seed starting mix at your local nursery. Um, for me, I have many, many seeds trays that I need to start, so it's more economical for me to make my own seed starting mix. Okay, so next thing I do is I use the mix. And I fill up my tray, my seeds, seed starting cells. Once I have it good and leveled off like this, then I come back through here and I mash in all of the seed cells. Mash them in good and tight. Use your fingers, push them down in there because this thing is just full of air. And if you have air inside these cells when you're trying to start your seeds, they're not gonna germinate. You know, you're just wasting your money and your time and very disappointing. So you want to keep these things good and tight when you get ready to start. So push them down good. And once I have them down packed in there pretty tight, the next thing I do is I pre-moisten. Some people pre-moisten their soil before they put it in, but I've always found it easier to do it like this. So you can do it either way you want. It's up to you. So now that I got it tight, I pre-moisten each cell by flooding it a little bit. Okay. Let that soak down just for a few seconds. You see it just gobbles up that moisture, it's so dry. And once I got it where I don't see the water standing anymore, then I tamp down the tray. Now it's really good and tight and it's moist. I'm gonna use some um, spinach seeds here for this demonstration simply because the seeds are nice and big and you can see them on the camera. Here's the seeds. 
Now what I like to do is I like to put two to three seeds in each cell. I'll let those seeds germinate and as the seedlings get up mature, a little bit bigger where they're an inch or so tall, I'll come in with a pair of scissors and snip off, you know, the weakest looking seedlings and keep the best one. So I thin it down to where I have one seedling for each tray. So let's start out by putting a couple seeds in each one of these cells. And I try to make sure that I get them kind of close to the middle of the cell because if you don't, they run out to the end, you know, to the edge of the cup. And I just don't like them to grow down the edge of the cup. Okay. After I get the, uh, the seeds in the cups, and I come back and I add in some more soil and level that back off again to where you got right at about a quarter of an inch of um, soil on top of those seeds. And right now this looks like I got more than a quarter inch, but keep in mind, it's full of air. So once I get it in there, again, I mash it down a little bit. I hit it with a little bit of water. You'll see it sink down some more. So I'm, I'm getting to that quarter inch, that magic quarter inch mark I'm looking for of soil over the top of the seed. You don't have to add very much water that time. And again, I tamp it down. And the last thing I like to do is I always put a tag in my seed trays. I like to write on what that seed is, what that tray is, and what date that I planted it. Okay, then I stick it right into the corner here and one of the cells, and that tray's ready to go to the seed starting rack and germinate. Caraflex cabbage seeds are planted in the seed starting trays. Let's put them in the seed starting rack and get them rolling. Okay, cabbage seeds are in the seed starting rack and they're off and running, so stick with us and watch the progression of this all the way through till we harvest them. So we'll be back shortly as soon as we get these um, germinated and they start to, you know, mature out, we'll uh, harden them off and get them out into the, uh, into the earth garden. So we'll be back soon. Well, our Caraflex cabbage has been in the uh, seed starting rack for two weeks and I thought I'd just uh, give you an update on, on the progress of these little seedlings. Come on up and take a close look at this with me. Well, it looks like a, a really good germination rate, but um, they seem to have stalled. Here, here they all are. It looks like uh, we probably got about 90% germination rate. Little tiny seedlings, they're, they're still with the codlin leaves. I don't see any true leaves coming out. Maybe just on a couple of them trying to get started, but they're really struggling in this heat. So we're gonna to try to keep them cool and keep them, you know, moist and see if we can't get, uh, get these up big enough to, to get them uh, planted. So let's, let's keep our eye on these guys and uh, we'll be back here in, you know, a couple of weeks and we'll take another look at them then, okay? We'll be back soon. Okay, our Caraflex cabbage have been out on the hardening table for the last week and uh, they're doing pretty good. They're ready to get in the earth, uh, earth bed out there. So let's get these together and we'll uh, run over to the earth bed and get these planted. I'm just gonna put in one single row of these and um, I just want you to learn how to do this, you know, together with me. So we're just gonna do one row. Um, when I get over to the earth bed, what I'm going to do is the way I always do these plants. I'm going to cultivate my row and um, fluff it up with my four inch cultivator and um, get it nice and smooth. I'll smooth it out with my grading rake. Um, I don't have to um, put this in a, use my string line to get straight rows because I'm only doing one row and I'm putting it in the perimeter box of my um, earth bed so it's easy to string out. I don't have to use this guide string. I can just eyeball it right down the row. So uh, we'll go over there and get the, um, 
ground cultivated, get it graded. Then I'll dig a little hole about four inches deep and I'll put me a good handful of blood meal in there to promote that uh, foliage growth with a nice strong boost of organic nitrogen. So we're gonna hit it with the nitrogen, the blood meal, and uh, cover it over and water it in. And we'll be back and uh, watch the progress. So I'll meet you over to earth bed. Let's get this in the ground. Okay, I'm gonna start off right here in the middle of this bed. I'm gonna dig a little hole with my hand. I like to make it about four inches deep and I usually go from the center of my palm to the tip of my finger. That's how I know I got it right. Then I take the blood meal and I put a handful right in the hole. And I get out of one of my little seedlings Carefully get it out of the bucket, out of the packet, and I pack it in. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to put these about two feet apart. That gives them plenty of room to cascade out without really interfering with each other because if I get them too close together, when they start to mature and cascade out, the leaves just bunch up together and they become leggy. And I don't want them to do that because that'll cause them not to form a head. So I'm going to keep them plenty of spacing, two feet apart. Okay, let me get the rest of these in. Well, we got one, one row of Caraflex cabbage in right here in the perimeter box. So we'll be back in the days ahead. We'll watch the development of these um, cabbages until uh, we harvest that pretty head. So we'll be back in a few weeks. Well, it looks like our little Caraflex cabbage are happy to see this cool weather set in. It's late, uh, early November here in Florida and they are starting to um, get some traction now and uh, putting on some good foliage, a lot better than when we first planted them. You remember how small they were. They were just barely big enough to even transplant, but they're, they're coming now. So uh, we'll keep our eye on these in the days ahead and we'll watch the progression of these all the way up till we get ahead. So. We'll be back and let's give these about three weeks or so and uh, we'll come back and do another update then. So we'll see you soon. Well, our Caraflex cabbage is coming in, ready to harvest. Uh, they will increase in size over the next couple of weeks, but this is about the smallest uh, you can start to harvest them at this. This is the small stage, what I call the small stage. And over the next couple of weeks, they'll get a little bit bigger, but this to me is the most tender and the most sweet spot they're at. So let me uh, pull one up. I just love the shape of them, the ox heart shape. And they're such a sweet cabbage that um, 
me and Nancy, we usually just eat two, one for me, one for her. But anyway, let me grab a couple of these and uh, show you what they look like. You harvest it just like any other cabbage. You bend it over, move the outer leaves out of the way, and just cut the whole stalk off. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Can you see that pretty good? Mm -hmm. How you like that? That's a really sweet cabbage. Let's take this over to the uh, harvest area and we'll wash them up and I'll split one open just to show you the inside, but oh, they're good. So I see you over at the harvest area. Okay, they're nice and clean, rinsed off well. Let me get a couple of these big outer leaves off of here. We eat those too, by the way. What a beautiful, what a beautiful little cabbage, Caraflex cabbage. So let me chop one open. Let's take a look at the inside. Oh my, isn't that beautiful? I can't wait to eat that. Well, I hope you had fun uh, growing these uh, Caraflex cabbages with me today. This is a, a really a, a good candidate for your uh, fall garden. You may want to try it yourself this year. Caraflex cabbage, very sweet. And as you can see, the insides are absolutely beautiful. So I hope that you enjoyed it and uh, that our video brought a smile to your face and that you had a, a moment of, of a good joyful day today just watching our video so until me and nancy see you next time always remember by his hands we are fed give us lord our daily bread amen have a blessed day mm -hmm.